At the beginning of the war, um, Henry Maxim, who um, invented this machine gun that we use, started to try and sell it all around the world. The Russians bought it, the Germans bought it, but the British didn't. And I think that we still had a feeling that war would be fought differently and that this, this thing called the devil's paintbrush as it was affectionately known, was not going to be a weapon of war. We come down first stop and see, then he, he goes to sight, and, we, and he turns the gun toward me, and then he comes down to The charge itself was deeply shocking because it illustrates the randomness of it all. It doesn't matter who you are, where you came from, or how decent or good you were, you know, the machine gun's going to take you out. Stephen gave me the most amazing note, actually. He said, give me your war face and the camera's going to move across. And as you feel it come up in front of you, um, I want you to de-age yourself by 20 years. So you're 29, and then when you see those machine guns, you're nine years old. I want to see the child in you. Um, I just thought that was one of the most astonishing acting notes I'd ever been given. What do we do with the horses? If they're injured, shoot them. And the others, sir? The others you round up and take to base camp. They will pull guns. You'll never get fancy horses like these to pull guns. And shoot them also. Sir, perhaps we could use some of them with the ambulances to get the injured man off the field. If they'll take the harness? I'd like to try, sir. Joey, who's a, who's a charger, who's really beautiful and really strong, and for him it's like a Ferrari, so he, he really falls in love with him, and he can also use him for, for the escape. Gentlemen, we move forward to the front line tonight. Full marching order. Get moving. The trickiest moment in the movie was the moment when the horses go onto the German side. So the sort of decision that we made was that when we reach the German side, that we try and get very quickly into an adventure. After the horse passes, everybody's watching, and they run out to the middle of the road, all looking and talking about it. Get them out, boys! Here they come! Oh, 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 oh. Even though the movie takes place primarily in France, at least the second and third acts, it, it was not shot in France, it was shot in England. We found a, a house that does not look anything like a French farmhouse, but it had a wonderful setting. Actually, I just added things to it to try to make it not only look French, but I, I actually had in my mind's eye that that part of the movie was a little bit like Heidi and her grandfather. So I wanted to make it an idyllic oasis. French Farm, for me, was a vacation from the horrors of war. It was a little bit of a time out where the war was close but not so close that for a little while the audience, as well as the horses, could, could breathe again. For Joey, the horse, it just seemed like he could remember Albert through this little girl who was taking such good care of him. Today, we learned to jump. When I call you, be very brave and leap over this. Leap over it. Watch me. Cut. Coming. Swing. Yeah. Really, with your heart, with your heart, try to get Joey to understand what he needs to do. With your heart. So when you're saying, you know, be brave and, and big exaggerated movements with your arms. When I call you, be very brave and leap over it. I hadn't really been with horses that much at all. And it was amazing being with the horses. And now I've realized what 
beautiful and gentle creatures they can be. They were just so amazing to work with. Cut, Brent, very nicely. That was good. Through the journey of the horse, we see how, how he, he touches the lives of, of many different people, Germans, French people. In the book and in reality, um, all of these events would have taken place over, over a lot of years. And the process of making the film is you have to condense it and make the story almost fable-like. What will happen is these two trucks are offloading all of the German soldiers. And right here you're going to ask him the question. My name is my land. Why are you And then he asks you this way. Food. The food. Keep walking. For the soldiers. It's all wrong. Right. Everyone must give their share. Right. Why are you here? Food. For the soldiers at the front. Everyone must give their share. For an actor, français, comme pour la plupart des acteurs, peut-être au monde, il y a une véritable mythologie, Spielberg. Et puis voilà, un jour, vous vous retrouvez avec lui, vous voyez un monsieur extrêmement euh, gentil, courtois, euh, sympathique, attentif, très très bon directeur d'acteur. Il donne des, des indications d'une très grande précision, d'une très grande justesse. Et en même temps, il laisse un grand crédit à l'acteur de pouvoir euh, apporter, inventer quelque chose. Donc voilà, je suis, euh, je suis un homme très heureux <rire> d'avoir eu la chance, une fois dans ma vie, de pouvoir travailler avec ce grand monsieur. Somewhere in Stephen's mind is the western. The, you know, the great moment in American movies when someone goes over the hill and there's the Indians. And you think, oh no, it's all going to go horribly, horribly wrong. The boys take everything from everyone. What will happen to them? They will pull artillery until they die, or until the war is over. It will never be over. You have your answer then. It's a pity they found you. The cannon pole is a location called Bourne Wood. It already has a deforested area which they let you work in. Here we go. Ready, guys? All right, stand by. Camera's good. All right, roll sound, roll. When you come to a set like this, it's an absolutely astonishing experience because you, you didn't expect such a great detail that makes an atmosphere that um, makes your heart beat a little bit faster. The guns that we built for this, the originals weigh eight and a half tons, so we built two guns and we got them down to just under two tons in weight, but it was quite a struggle to get something that big down to that weight. Come on, move it! We have six horses attached to it, but they physically couldn't pull it. The incline's like a ridiculously steep incline, so we are having a mechanical winch help pull that up the hill. OK, make it there, and then Bobby will fill the other horses in behind, spread out. Being able to train with the horses, try and get them accept those pieces of equipment as well as also do their action within that as well. You know, they're really, really tricky, tricky situations for us. Clearing, good. Bang. Good, Janish. Roll. Rolling. 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 Back to action. And action. Moving. Move. Move. Come on, go. Come on, go. It was one.
one of the most, I, I guess, gut-wrenching scenes for me to shoot because every time we got to the top of the hill, we just have to go back down for take two or for another angle. And it was up and down, up and down for days. So it wasn't the most fun I had on the picture, but the horses all got through it safely. And uh, I think it's one of the more excruciating <laughs> scenes to watch in the movie. Right, well. Action! Charge! We made all the working components. We worked in conjunction with the special effects. We could load the ammunition, and then special effects took over with a charge in the barrel for firing. People invest their emotions in this horse. The horse is this innocent victim that allows us to witness war somewhat from a distance, but at the same time, everything that's horrible about what happens in war, it's emotionally vested in this animal. third act, you arrive in no man's land. And now it's like the moon. What have they done to the land? It's, it's, it's absolutely barren of life. Rick Carter found an old airfield. I mean, the towers and the hangars had long since been torn down. Of all the work he did on War Horse, this was the most extraordinary thing. He took that flat, flat airfield and he turned it into the Somme in 1917. The first day that I came to this location, I was stunned. Here was the Great War in three dimensions. I could walk through it, I could smell it. It was really a very, very great evocation of what it might have been like. A background and action! They're not advised! It's a position! Let's go! Let's go! It's a position! Hold your nerve, boys. Remember, it's not too far to go. There is a through. Run fast. Keep your wits about you. Keep your eyes open. And God and the King will keep an eye on you. Company will fix bayonets. Today we've been filming the, uh, the the point where we prepare to go over the top. And the trenches are really, really long. And, and with all the extras, it, it's, they're really packed and very muddy and very wet. It looks like hell, which I think is obviously the desired effect, because it is hell. Watch your movements, boys. Aye. Roll sound, roll! Mark it. And background action, guys! land is a description of the piece of territory between the British or French trenches and those of the Germans. It doesn't belong to anybody. It's the disputed territory. <laughs> Our soldiers face the enemy rifles, enemy machine guns, and very, very importantly, with pyrotechnics, artillery. If a human is in no man's land, that human is most likely to die. And the moment you go over the top of your trench, the chances of you surviving are almost, are almost zero. Make sure when you fire the shot, you put your safety catch on, up and run. Safety, 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 safety all the time. Very early on in the production, we had a, a group and we gave them a boot camp. Right, so what we're gonna do now is Try and go through some basic drill, get you marching up and down so you look like soldiers. And action!
Crossing No Man's Land was, for me, the best part of the filming. Purely from the sense that you got of what it, what it must have been like. I mean, I can't say I can relate to what anybody in the First World War went through. I think it would be insulting to say that I could. But with Stephen, everything that can be real seems to be real. So, you know, we've got real weapons that were used in World War I. Explosions going off everywhere and bullet hits and squibs and hundreds of people charging in behind you. And by the time I reached the end, they'd all have dropped, they'd all have fallen. And it's that, that the sense that that gives you is, is extraordinary, just extraordinary. The background artists, you know your set positions, yes? Yeah. Safety first, boys. Be careful, please, guys, thank you. Let me know, Rob. We went in there a week before shooting. We were using uh, air rounds for these explosions, which are like flipping plates. So as the bombs were going off, you see people getting exploded in the background. Bye. We've always had a bulk of extras that have been trained by us. We put stuntmen, and then around those, we, we put our core action extras around that, knowing where the explosions are, so we could find all the safe zones for everybody to run in. Uh, okay, I'd like, I I'd like to might, burn this. Could this be on, on fire? We have sort of different levels. We have background levels, which is high explosives. As we come in towards the action area with stuntmen and special extras, then we go into the steel uh, boiler ends. The material that we put in is, is a mixture of cork, which gives us, you know, like bigger sized debris, uh, peat, which just gives us the earthy look, uh, and then vermiculite. And then we just initiate those with a primer core, which gives us a, a very good kick up in the air. We're going hard, guys. By some miracle, Albert makes it across no man's land alive uh, with his friend Andrew, and they get in the German trench. Well, man, I'm really proud of you. That's in the movie. And just when they think it's safe, a gas shell lands just behind Andrew. Gas, gas, gas! I mean, anyone who's read anything about the use of gas during the First World War knows that it's, it's one of the most horrendous weapons. It, it destroys your lungs and your eyes, any soft tissue. And Albert's blinded. Um, it's only temporary, but I mean that's that's one of my greatest fears. I think um, losing your sight. The gas got him. We had to wait till morning. Oh, look, he wounded! Away to the dressing station. Beautiful cut print. What's very difficult is actually getting the emotion from the horses so that we understand what their emotion is. Please, please, please. Stay on your feet. No, please. No, no, no. That is something that I'm very lucky with Finder. He has that personality that you can see some of that emotion. <laughs> Top Thorn was played by a horse named George, a very large horse, had to lay very still. Finder had to come and stand between his legs and the horses were both so well-trained and calm. Steven Spielberg had the entire set quiet no movement. Here we go, shooting now. And don't talk, boys. It was so emotional, the whole crew was crying. We wanted to make sure the horses understood each other. You ever had a great scene with it where his, his buddy dies? Joey's looking around and he's confused and looks down and he 
You know, that really got me. That was a real sensitive scene. Now let's get the tank through here. Great. Lovely. Stephen wanted the tank to be good, you know, because it is a symbolic part of the movie where, you know, it is the horses versus the machinery. We built a World War I Mark IV tank out of steel. We got an excavator, motor and stuff for the drive units, had all the plates made up, and it's, you know, it's pretty authentic. If you look at it, from, you know, we had some um, military advisors in that, that, that were quite impressed with it. Okay, here we go, guys. Speed. Go, 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 go,
I thought we could all gather together here. So Kathy and I, uh, you know, with all of our hearts, uh, can thank all of you for making such a tremendous effort in turning what I at first thought was an impossible endeavor, which is, you know, making a movie where horses perform exceptionally well and characters, actors, perform just as well. And everybody, every department, phenomenal work. Thank you so much. Cheers.